Hi there, my name is Jason Harlow and welcome to the first uh, lesson video for the Introduction to Physics Primer. Today I want to talk about what is physics, uh, what are models, uh, what's the scientific method, uh, how we use units to make measurements, orders of magnitude, which is powers of 10, and unit conversion. Okay, so if you type open uh, stacks, S-T-A-X, uh, college on Google, you'll see openstackscollege.org. You can click on that, and this takes you to uh, this website. Uh, you click on our books, and you should see various different books. There's physics, click on physics, and you get to college physics, and you scroll to the right, down a little bit and click get this book. Um, there's different ways you can get it. I would just download a uh, free PDF of this book like that. Uh, you can choose between high or low resolution depending on your internet speed. Let's choose high and this takes a second. Uh, it asks you for money uh, for a donation. You can go continue without donating and it downloads. So uh, this is Adobe Reader the, showing the PDF that you downloaded. It's actually 1,264 pages scrolling down here. Uh, so it's, you know, be, be careful before you print it, just print a small range. Um, if you go, for example, to page four, uh, you'll see the table of contents showing all the chapters. Uh, if you go to page 12, <coughs> you'll see the beginning of chapter one. And so there's figures, there's sections, uh, you can read through this. If you go to the end of each chapter, like if we go up to uh, page 32, it's, uh, there's a summary of chapter one. And then there's some end of chapter uh, conceptual questions that you can look at to sort of test your uh, understanding of concepts. And then there's problems and exercises. And so the end of each chapter has, has a whole lot of nice questions and, and problems. And I've suggested certain ones on my, uh, on my website. So what is physics? Well, physics is the natural science that involves the study of matter and its motion through space and time. And physics involves concepts such as energy and force. And more generally, it's the analysis of nature conducted in order to understand how the universe behaves. So Galileo laid the foundation for modern experimentation in the early 1600s. Um, he will talk a little bit later about how he rolled marbles down inclines and uh, dropped things from, I guess, the Leaning Tower of Pisa and figured out that objects of different weight fall with the same acceleration or fall in the same amount of time in the absence of air resistance. So you know if you drop a hammer, it falls faster than a feather. But if you could take away all the air in the room, so if you were in a vacuum, you would find that they both fall at the same rate. And also Galileo figured out that an, a moving object does not need a force in order to keep it moving. It just wants to keep moving along with its own inertia. Isaac Newton uh, came after Galileo and wrote down a lot of uh, mathematical formulae which, uh, which were based on Galileo's ideas. He sort of uh, continued Galileo's work and wrote the Principia, which had the three laws of motion, a law of uh, universal gravitation, which states that all massive objects attract one another. So uh, these laws of motion correctly predicted the observed motions of the planets and comets in their orbit around the sun, and also the orbit of the moon around the Earth. And the story goes that Isaac Newton was sitting out uh, in, his, uh, in his front yard one day under an apple tree, and he was wondering what force might uh, pull the moon in its orbit around the Earth. He knew that in order to go in a circular path around the Earth, the moon would have to be pulled towards, like you'd have to have something like a string or some force pulling towards the Earth. And then an apple fell, on, uh, fell onto the ground, and uh, Isaac Newton thought, well, maybe with the force of gravity, which pulls apples towards the center of the Earth, reaches out all the way to the moon and pulls it towards the center of the Earth. And that's, that was correct. So a model uh, is a way of, I guess, describing the universe. So for example, this is the planetary model of an atom, which shows electrons orbiting a nucleus. So uh, this might be a neon atom, for example, and the little uh, red balls are meant to be 
uh, positively charged protons. The blue balls are meant to be neutral uh, neutrons, and the little uh, orbiting uh, balls with the minus sign in them are supposed to be negatively charged electrons. So atoms don't really look like this, but this model helps us understand our observations of neon gas and how it works. So uh, models are uh, sometimes include drawings, cartoons like this, sometimes they include uh, mathematical equations that give us predictions. And so one nice equation which you can play with is called a polynomial, uh, where you have uh, x, uh, y is, a, is sort of your prediction, and x is your independent variable. So if x changes, then uh, y is a uh, times x squared plus b times x plus c, where a, b, and c are constants that you can, you can choose. So sometimes in these videos, I'll suggest that you go to FET, P-H-E-T, Interactive Simulations, and there'll be a web link um, in, the, in the link below this video and also on the course web page. And you can go and play around with this uh, at your leisure. So as you adjust A, B, and C, you adjust the shape of this red line. And the red line, if you give it an X as an input, it gives you uh, a prediction for what Y should be. So the scientific method, I have my own sort of four-step scientific method. Number one is make careful observations of the world around you and ask good questions so that you're familiar with the trends, repeatable phenomena, and previous discoveries. So become sort of an expert in your field. Number two is using mathematical models and theories uh, generate a hypothesis, something that you can test uh, that makes predictions. And then number Step three is perform experiments which test this hypothesis and design your experiments so that you might actually disprove your theories. Uh, now step four is analyze your results. Uh, if your experiments disagree with your hypothesis, then you need to refine your theories, change your hypothesis uh, until these come into agreement. And of course, publish your results so that other people can become experts and continue, continue your work. So let's start talking about units. We define a physical quantity uh, either by specifying how it's measured or, or by stating how it's calculated from other measurements. So uh, measurements of physical quantities uh, are expressed in terms of units, which are some standardized values. So the textbook has uh, a picture of someone looking at a map that shows how to get around some mountains. And there's a scale on the map which shows the length of one cable. But this guy is looking and wondering, wait, how big is a cable? And so whoever made the map wasn't uh, clear in uh, letting the, the reader know uh, what the scale was because he didn't have a standardized unit. So uh, we have standardized units in science. It's uh, called SI units. Uh, this is Système International because it started in France. And SI units include four fundamental units for length, mass, time, and electric current, called the meter, the kilogram, the second, and the ampere. And all other physical quantities can be expressed as algebraic combinations of length, mass, time, and current. Sometimes you'll have length times length is length squared, or uh, you know, ma uh, length per time would be uh, would be velocity, etc. So units for these quantities are called derived units. So these are the fundamental units. If you combine them, you get derived units. So let's give it a try. You have a football field that has a length. It's rectangular. It has a length of 100 meters and a width of 60 meters. So the equation for the area of a rectangle is length times width. So what is the area of the football field? Uh, all of these answers are 6,000. But the question is, what are the units? So A is no units. Uh, B is kilometers, C meters, D meters squared, or E millimeters. So I have these give it a try questions uh, sprinkled throughout my videos. Y the idea is I'd like you to think about it, commit yourself to an answer, uh, and, then, and then proceed. So why don't you press pause right now, think about it, and then resume when you think you know the answer. Okay, so hopefully you uh, chose D meters squared. So you've got meters times meters. The idea is 100 times 60 is uh, 6,000 and meters times meters is meters squared. So meters squared is the unit of area. The second, an atomic clock such as this one uses the vibrations of a cesium atom to keep time and the SI system defines the second as being you know nine 
billion one hundred ninety two million six hundred thirty one thousand seven hundred and seventy of these vibrations and the meter is defined as the distance that light travels in a vacuum in this one it looks like about three hundred millionth of a second in a vacuum and distance is speed multiplied by time so that's uh, that's how we find distance and the kilogram actually is based on an actual object which is sitting in a vault somewhere in Paris uh, and it's made of platinum iridium and we define a kilogram to be how much mass is in that particular object and there are actually are replicas of this standard ca kilogram kept at various locations around the world including uh, one here in Canada in Ottawa prefixes so each power of 10 in this SI metric system represents a different order of magnitude so uh, capital G stands for giga 10 to the 9 capital M stands for mega 10 to the 6 so million uh, kilo means a thousand centi means a hundredth milli means a thousandth micro is a, is a millionth and nano is a billionth so for example instead of writing uh, 0 0.01 meters you could write that as 10 to the minus 2 meters or just one centimeter and it's often necessary to convert from one type of unit to another so for example if we were to convert 80 meters to into kilometers uh, you could use a conversion factor which is a ratio that's equal to one so in this case we know uh, that there's a thousand meters in one kilometer so we write the units that we have then we multiply them by the conversion factor so that the units we don't want cancel out so 80 meters is what we want to convert now I write uh, a fraction a ratio which is one such that meters is on the bottom so the meters cancels meter so I'll go one kilometer uh, divided by a thousand meters as we know that's one you multiply times 80 meters that won't change it meters cancels meters uh, on your calculator you type 80 divided by a thousand and you get 0 0.08 and the units that remain are kilometers. So once again, let's give it a try. Uh, you know your height is 65 inches, and you want to convert this to centimeters. You also know that 2.54 centimeters is equal to one inch. So you're gonna multiply 65 inches by a conversion factor equal to one. And so it could either be A or B. A is 2.54 over 1, and B is 1 over 2.54. Which? Please pause the video, think about which one you'd use, then resume. So hopefully you answered A. You want to have inches on the bottom. And the reason for that, the equation looks like this. 65 inches multiplied by, if you take 2.54 centimeters divided by inches, the inches cancel and you just end up with centimeters. And in your calculator, you type 65 times 2.54 divided by one, and you just get 165 centimeters, and that seems to make sense.